here we will discuss about uh, introduction to random process and uh, prior to that uh, we will talk about application of uh, central limit theorem in order to estimate probability of few event whose distribution might be unknown might be not given so after that uh, we will go to discuss in detail about uh, a random process and you will see that it is uh, really interesting in sense that uh, many random experiment uh, if you observe that evolves with respect to time or with respect to a space that time simply uh, with the help of random variable we can't model that kind of uh, random process random experiment so we have to come up with random process uh, when there is there is some kind of evolution with respect to time so that's why uh, like one kind of dynamical system if you take dynamical system it evolves with respect to time if you see a pandemic that also evolves with respect to time so various diseases that evolve with respect to time so many various such kind of uh, dynamical activities are there then we need to come up with uh, <coughs> one an interesting kind of uh, uh, approach that happens to be uh, uh, what able to uh, <coughs> model <coughs> that uh, evolution uh, in a proper way so that's where random process is playing very important role because we have we have already uh, discussed several times that uh, we random process actually ultimately if you see in mathematical form it would be sequence of random variables so that sequencing that we can say that index that coming uh, that you can talk, uh, talk about the evolution perspective so first uh, member of the random process we will say that initial uh, random variable and after that next next next, next uh, it will come on that there is some kind of evolution that uh, we will see it here so that is the perspective of uh, introducing random process okay so first coming to outline of today's lecture uh, we would like to discuss application of central limit theorem in order to estimate probability of an event whose distribution would be unknown to us distribution would be not given but don't worry we had already seen enough through central limit theorem and large law of large number that uh, we know about uh, uh, sampling distribution of the sample mean okay also we know the sampling distribution of sample uh, deviation okay so both we know so uh, despite of uh, uh, what unknown uh, distribution of the given random variable uh, just uh, come up with uh, a random sample of size n from there define a sample mean and we know the sampling distribution of that and we can talk about to uh, further uh, nature of sampling distribution of uh, the given sample mean uh, through various uh, asymptotic approach that one is a what law of large number another one is central limit theorem so we had already seen in previous classes okay so next we will discuss about uh, uh, we will introduce random process what is random process what would be the mathematical form of random process and various uh, simple example of random process we will introduce after that we will talk about uh, uh, various way of representation of uh, a random process there would be two different way to view a random process actually random process it would be function of uh, two argument it would here till now we had already seen that uh, uh, random variable uh, here argument of that random variable happens to be outcome of the sample of space and that's where we say that uh, a random variable happens to be a map from sample of space to real number r so that we had already seen that then if you talk about random process this one is something more than random variable why because random process deal with a sequence of random variable so sequential this index is provided by t or time index also you can say that so how we can uh, define it so it is a sequence of random variable so for each t we are getting x t that happens to be sequence of random it is a random variable so for each fixed t we can say that x t it is a random variable so if you see closely what does it talk about if you try to write this one in term of more uh, explicit form then it is taking the random process is taking form of this one the one argument is coming in the suffix with respect to evolution that evolution with respect to time what we are calling it another uh, argument is coming with respect to that randomness that omega is pro omega is providing the randomness so in total we can say that random process is having uh, two argument one is uh, that evolution with respect to evolution that time index 
another uh, argument happens to be omega that provides randomness okay so in short also we can de denote a random process uh, just uh, for this uh, simple notation we also we just we can denote it by xt only that so these two uh, uh, the omega by, by default it will it would be inherited within that okay so these three any of these three notation you can proceed with in the process of uh, introducing a random process okay and after that we will try to view view uh, random process uh, from two different perspective of the uh, these two argument when we keep fixing t then what kind of nature the, that the random process will take when we, if we fix outcome omega then what kind of nature it will take so those two uh, uh, variability we will see and after that we will try to assume, uh, specify a random process through joint distribution of for a time sampling instant okay first we will sample the time index okay so finite number of time index any finite number of time index so it would be a random sampling what we call it and after that uh, with respect to those sampled instant we will come up with uh, random variable corresponding random variable and we will talk about joint distribution of those random variable n number of random variable so that that would be actually a ultimate way to specify a random process so all those things we will discuss in today class so coming to first part that application of central limit theorem in order to estimate probability of event so here first uh, I, I will try to compute probability of a uh, sum sum of random variable it would be given but we don't know the uh, distribution okay that situation would be here so question is coming like this way uh, using the central limit theorem we can immediately write the distribution of sum or distribution of sample mean this I, that also you can say that this sum is sample sum and sample mean we know that x bar and we had already seen uh, that we define it from an id random sample or id random variable xi okay and if you know the mean and variance of xi so uh, we know the mean and variance of x but we don't know the distribution only mean and variance are known to us so some, <coughs> if it is not variance is not uh, unknown then we will go to uh, proceed with estimate of that variance uh, that sample variance simply i would like to call okay so here random variables of interest is either uh, sample sum or sample mean of id random variables xi so uh, we can we have already seen that sample mean is defined as a uh, defined from the random id random sample of size n in id fashion it is defined like this way first you need to sum all those uh, random variables uh, id random variables uh, so x1 to xn and after that you have to divide it in order to get sample mean so this is the sample mean and this is the sample sum and we know uh, easily we can compute uh, mean of our expectation of sample mean and mean or expectation of uh, um, sample sum also so all these things we we know that we had already computed uh, several times so if you apply here central limit theorem over a uh, right sample mean then uh, what does central limit theorem says that so it is converging to a standard normal random variable z in distribution it is convergence in distribution so oh, simply we can say that if we don't know the distribution of x size no worry okay what we can just proceed with distribution of z distribution of z easily so distribution of, of zn it will be very much similar to approximately uh, it will be the same distribution of our, what uh, a standard normal random variable is having so that is the perspective that coming from central limit theorem there is one more perspective coming from uh, uh, in order to if you try to compute probability that uh, uh, sample sum is observing value between a to b it is very simple to compute how we can compute we know that first we need to deviate this sample mean by the corresponding mean of sample mean what does that that one is n times mu okay and after that we have to divide it by uh, a standard deviation of the sample mean what here you can see that the variance of sample mean is n times sigma square so a standard deviation would be a square root of n times sigma okay since that feature is coming so sigma it would be out of the square root it will not inside a square root here sigma is out of the square root okay we are taking a variance of the sample sum so that's way so here this situation is coming and we know that uh, through so if we do this kind of asterization so what is happening that you can focus on what does it talk about it is actually our asterized sample mean okay zn that zn which converts to 
a standard normal random variable z in distribution so that's way if you are willing to compute this probability this probability approximately equal to difference of uh, these two probability so uh, here these two probability easily you can compute it from the normal table why because phi happens to be uh, Cumulative distribution function of standard normal random variable z. So this derivation is directly borrowed from where central limit theorem. So that that is the ultimate aim to get application of central limit theorem in order to compute probability of sum or sample sum or sample mean. So whatever situation would be there. So that one was the general perspective. We are coming to a specific problem. So here uh, problem is coming like this way. Suppose a bank tells a customer standing in the queue one by one. Okay, one by one. There is a queue, uh, and that bank teller serves customer one by one. Okay. Suppose that is server time x i for customer i customer has sample mean so mean true mean two that two minute and variance happens to be uh, one. Okay. So these two are given to us. Okay, mean and variance given to us, but we don't know what is the distribution x i is having. We don't know that one is not given. You can easily see that distribution is unknown to us. So what is what is happening? That we assume that question would would come to compute a desired probability. So question is like this way: If we assume that server service time uh, times for different bank customer are independent, that means x i each x i is uh, n to x i. If you uh, Take that happens to be independent to each other. That means IID situation we are taking it here. IID situation. And if, if we suppose S50 is talking about total time the bank tellers spend serving 50 customer, then we have to find the probability that uh, what is the probability that uh, S50 is observing value between 90 to 110. Okay, that probability we have to kind of find it. So easily you can say that why we are getting this kind of bond. So we have seen enough that uh, concentration infinity uh, that uh, most of time con con uh, con concentration infinity is talking about that uh, the value that sample sum or sample mean take value around the mean desired respective mean. That's if you are taking sample mean then that. Uh, Sample mean will observe value mostly with high probability within epsilon neighborhood of the true mean. And if you are taking sample sum, then sample sum is observing value within epsilon distance of the mean of the sample sum. That happens to be n times mean of the uh, true distribution. Okay, so easily we can find. So here. S50, uh, what does it from the definition? Easily we can compute all those things. So here we are having this is the sample mean. Easily we can define it by summing the 50 ID random variable by and after that we are dividing it by 50. And how we get S50 by summing these 50 ID random variable. And we know that uh, from here it it implies that what is the expectation of sample sum? It would be n time mu the true mean and 2 n is equal to 50 and 2 is equal to oh, uh, mu is equal to 2 it is given so easily we computed uh, expectation of sample mean this one and likewise also we can compute variance of sample mean what is that that one is n time sigma square and sigma is equal to 1 so easily we will, we will get it n is equal to 50 so 50 times 1 50 we got the uh, sample variance of sample mean as well. So we are having all the desired things. So usually we can see that S50, it will observe value around 100. Then with what probability it will observe value around this 100? That here simply it is saying that uh, here accuracy, that epsilon deviation around uh, 100 it is given. So it is talking about, uh, so 100 you can observe in the here 100, would, it would, suppose it is 100 here, then uh, 100, uh, 110, where it would be, right of 100, then how you get uh, 110 by adding 10 to 100. So that's why you are getting uh, 110. Likewise, 90, how you are getting, it is uh, just uh, left of 100. So you deviate it, uh, there is a uh, left deviation. So this would be 90. So simply you can say that what is the uh, epsilon accuracy, that what is the epsilon? Uh, if, uh, what is the epsilon or simply radial uh, under which uh, with high probability S50 is falling within epsilon neighborhood of 100 or mean, mean of the sample uh, sum. So that epsilon is simply you can say that it is somehow, somehow around 
10 you can say that it is equal to 10 easily you can identify in order to apply the central limit theorem so let us uh, compute uh, the prob desired probability so same uh, uh, concept i am taking it here we have already defined a style sample mean uh, you can express in term of sample mean or you can express in term of sample sum both are uh, similar there is no any issue so both will give same result okay so uh, we know from central limit theorem uh, zn will converge to z in distribution okay z happens to be a standard normal random variable but our ultimate aim is to compute this probability this is the probability desired probability that we need to compute so just uh, uh, we are proceeding with this uh, probability and just do we do uh, a summarization after that we know from central limit theorem this probability would be difference of of 5 at a square root of 2 and negative of a square root of 2 so these two value easily we can get it from normal table and that value is coming 0.8427 so we got the value of sample sum the what is the probability that sample sum falls between 90 uh, 90 to 110 it would be 110 110 the probability is uh, 0.84 so you can say that uh, 84 that means 80 percent very high probability you can say that this one is very high probability that uh, sample sum it would falls uh, within epsilon that uh, within 10 neighborhood with epsilon or 10 neighborhood of uh, 100 within 10 within 10 neighborhood of 100 what we say that so with uh, it, this probability is very high probability easily we can say 84 percent that 80.84 uh, very high probability is coming so that is the so without knowing the distribution of xi we are able to compute the probability of uh, sums this sample sum without knowing that so that is the beauty of central limit theorem we will talk about one more application in order to compute uh, some of errors sometimes definitely if you measure error would definitely associated with that measurement so uh, how we can compute that so in a communication system each data packet consists of thousand bits due to the noise each bit may be received in error with probability 0.1 so what's the probability of success you can say that it is uh, 0.1 it is given so each xi is a Bernoulli random variable simply each xi is a Bernoulli random variable so easily we can find the expectation of uh, xi what would be that 0.1 uh, the, for Bernoulli random variable expectation of xi happens to be probability of success that one is 0.1 and variance is what xi so our ultimate aim is that uh, what we have to compute uh, uh, probability of uh, the desired probability it would come here like so it is assumed that bit error occurs independently so we have to find the probability that uh, there are more than uh, 120 error in a certain data packet so this probability we have to find there are more than 110 errors okay in a certain data packet that probability we have to find it how we can find it that means uh, we will sum it up and we will say that uh, we will sum up all those error okay and we will say that it is uh, greater than 120 that probability we have to find it okay so n is already given here it is given thousand or uh, easily we can compute here uh, so we can define likewise uh, sample mean from this uh, id xi and also we can define sample sum and we can compute uh, uh, mean and the variance of the sample sum and sample sample mean also we can variance variance of sample some I mean all these we can compute from the given data we can easily compute so again this uh, logic of same central limit theorem uh, just define a standardized sample mean and that would converge to uh, a standard normal random variable so we know that but our question is what we we have to find what is probability that sn that is that sum of error that only that one is more than 120 that means one kind of right tail probability we are going to compute right tail probability so we are not worrying about left tail just we are focusing on right tail probability so how we can compute it so we can compute it by deviating uh, again uh, just deviate it by sample mean of the uh, mean of mean of the sample sum and divide by the corresponding standard deviation so just we do here we do just compute right tail probability so we did all these asterisation process so this probability would be what just it would be approximately equal to this probability and it is expressed in term of a distribution function of uh, a standard normal random variable so there is no any issue okay so here we can get it uh, 
this value from the normal table and ultimately we got the value of uh, right tail probability what what is that 0 0.017 so it is very much near to what we say that near to two percent around two percent so you can say that right tail probability it is very very small very low probability with very low probability error would be uh, greater than uh, 120 so that is the situation okay That is the situation uh, here you can see that in last example we had seen that high probability uh, that one that one was talking about concentration near to me okay true me and this problem is talking about very low probability it is talking about deviation right tail right tail probability that deviation from the uh, 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 deviation uh, epsilon away from sample mean right epsilon right away from sample mean so the, definitely that would be very small probability or very low probability that that situation is coming okay now we'll go to next segment that uh, introduction to random process so here just uh, we have already entered to last module of this course and till now anyone is having any question regarding that application of central limit theorem you can ask otherwise i will go forward any question till now Anyone? Do you have any question? Okay, fine. Then I will go forward to discuss about uh, random process. What does it talk about? So random process is really interesting in the sense that I, as I told that when there is an experiment which evolves with respect to time, that outcome evolves with respect to time, then simply random variable is not going to model that problem, that uh, random problem, okay, or random experiment. We have to come up with random process. That's why it is really interesting sense to capture real world problem so simple i have taken a simplest uh, motivational from motivation perspective a simplest uh, realization i have taken from uh, a stock uh, market or simply you can say that finance segment i have taken it so a possible realization of values of a stock object as a function of time how we can observe that okay suppose that we observe the stock price of a company over next few days okay so we are trying to observe so that company may have various stock it is not like the company is having single stock it may have various stock might be selling various uh, product okay so each uh, each product um, you can call it outcome and that uh, price of that will evolve with, uh, with respect to time so randomness is there so in particular xt would be the price at time t xt we are saying that price of the price price of a particular stock at time t simply we say that xt so so then uh, if you fix the outcome you fix the outcome omega that is uh, outcome omega so a possible outcome realization of xt from t0 equal to uh, t uh, from t0 uh, t equal to 0 to t equal to 1 it can be visualized as a very zigzag path it is a very zigzag path you can say that it is just uh, it is just uh, for a fixed uh, uh, outcome omega we have plotted for a fixed out a stock what we say that we have observed we are observing the price of uh, that uh, particular stock over over time so you can say that it is fluctuating a lot with respect to time it is fluctuating a lot but this path is a continuous it is a so this path simply we say that it is a sample path sample path apart apart from that there would be another uh, stock that would have another path so various uh, so with respect to that company there you will get various path various sample path so if you take all those sample path in totality you will get a random process so we can talk like this way for fixed t time t1 so you can you will you will have another path like this way zigzag path for another stock okay uh, you will have like this way okay like so various uh, sample path you will have so if you are fixing time suppose you are fixing time t1 xt is observing value along vertical axis t is observing value uh, along horizontal axis okay so so that is the situation so if you if you are fixing t uh, if t1 we are taking so with respect to t1 we see that uh, x t1 is observing various value observing various value and that value observed under certain probability law 
uh, and have certain definitely there would be certain probability law if you are able to uh, we are having very good data okay so this one this x t would have a distribution protein distribution that we can compute or we can estimate if it is not possible to compute uh, due to that uh, very uh, a strange nature then we can uh, estimate that uh, distribution of xt so how we can estimate based on available knowledge of finance our uh, whatever knowledge uh, we are having uh, about finance and whatever historical data we are having based on that we can find the distribution of x of t1 so this one is a random variable simply we can say that uh, here with respect to if you fix time you are getting a random variable if you fix uh, omega you are getting a sample path or one realization of the uh, random process okay so here similarly we can obtain another random variable x to x t1 t2 uh, if you observe for different time so if you are observing here different time again you can see that uh, call it t2 then you will get another random variable x t2 okay so here this would have different uh, pdf so that also we need to compute it based on the give our knowledge or expertise of finance and uh, whatever historical data are provided to us okay present in historical data also that would so that would help to compute the distribution of x of t or estimate of x of t if situation is very nice then we will able to compute if situation is not nice we need to estimate it okay that is the situation so simply we can say that a random process it is a collection of random variables usually indexed by time or space sometimes a space would come or sometimes time would come so generally uh, we generally index random process by time in general random process what we observe uh, okay so further if you are willing to get uh, a proper definition of a random process and why we are getting so we can define it like this way random process it is a mathematical model of a random exper uh, experiment where outcome evolves in time or a space uh, subject to some probability laws so there would be with respect to each time each fixed time there would be probability law okay there would be probability law so and hence it generates a sequence of numeric values it generates a sequence of numeric value with respect to that uh, variable variable nature variable nature of different different time uh, we are getting a sequence of numerical values okay so uh, for example that sequence of daily prices of a stock okay the daily price of with respect daily prices so with respect to each time we have to observe so we have to discretize here uh, like time properly like we can go hourly we can go 15 minute uh, interval we can go 10 minute depends upon our choice what in uh, what kind of discretization we uh, want to introduce other we can go continuous continuum time uh, from morning to evening so such facility every facility has there if time we are taking in a discrete fashion there then we will say that it is a discrete time random process if you are taking time in continuous fashion then we will say that it is a continuous time random process then also the sequence of a scores in a football ga game okay so in if you 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 can observe sequence of uh, uh, choose a team then uh, day wise you can note down sequence of a scores of or all those team okay in a football tournament you can uh, score uh, uh, get a sequence of a scores uh, in a football game simply so there would be a sequence so that sequence will vary each term will vary with respect to different time it is not like that uh, every time a team is having uh, uh, such kind of uh, command that a score three goal or four always three goal or always four goal it is not possible that uniform distribution is always not possible there would be some kind of uh, some non uniform kind, kind of distribution simply i would like to say that likewise also the sequence of failure times of a machine so uh, so that, that also form a uh, simply it is uh, here time evolution we easily observe and probability law is also associated with that with respect to each time so that's why it is uh, falling in the category of random process again we can see that the sequence of hourly traffic loads at a node of communication network that also for form form a random process okay or we can model with the help of random process and the sequence of radar measurement of the position of an airplane that also falls uh, a problem that can be modeled with the help of a random process so overall we can see that each numerical value in the sequence is modeled by a random variable okay so it's like it got a sequence like in a 
ID random sample we had already taken. So that's where I had taken notation like this way. X1 we are talking about first observation. X2 we are talking about second observation. Uh, X3 likewise third observation and it will go on Xn would be nth observation. So here X1 is observing various values. X1 is a first random variable. X2 is that, that, that one is uh, uh, observing second kind of observation, noting down second kind of observation. So X, X2 is the second uh, random variable. So in total, we are having a sequence of random variable. Definitely, it is a finite sequence in case of uh, sample statistics. What we had already seen that it is a finite sequence. Okay. So what simply it is providing a random process. It is, pro it is actually a random process. And uh, during the... Uh, uh, analysis of this random process what we observe so the random process it would be a sequence of random variables okay simply we say that it is a sequence of random variable that sequence might be a finite sequence or might be an infinite sequence and we have to uh, note down the following interest what are those we have to note down the dependency in the sequence of uh, values of generated by uh, process okay such as how do future price of a stock depends on the past so in id situation we had taken that each xi happens to be independent of other xj okay so that independent independent nature we had taken but if you deal with random process we don't uh, or not it is not always possible to proceed with independent nature we have to come to talk about dependency between n2 member of the random process so always dependency measure would be there so one of the interest uh, interesting approach to measure dependency that that one is coming through marco property that we will see it uh, later okay so dependency we have to see it so in order to uh, what uh, how that uh, past and uh, present in together predict future so that uh, how depends so that simply it say that depend dependency if you talk about evolution then you have to talk about dependency future must depend on present uh, including past and depend then later we will uh, further uh, give a stronger result later uh, in order to measure the dependency or weaker version depends upon what uh, what kind of situation is there okay then we have to see long term average involving the entire sequence of generated values so in long term where does it converge so that a stochastic convergence we had already seen that okay so that a stochastic convergence nature would come here in the random process as well so all these are very much essential in, to note down during uh, understanding of uh, random process uh, in order to model a uh, experiment which involve with respect to time okay so uh, in the process that we need to introduce some basic concept which describe the random process in a better way so one of that is a state of space that means uh, we know that for each fixed t x of t is what x t is simply a random variable that means uh, simply it is a map from sample of space to r for each fixed t okay so uh, definitely x t will observe values values from some set okay some set so pro or simply range of xt you can call it what is the range of xt that simply we are calling it a state of space okay and later also we, with respect to time there is one uh, it involve evolves with respect to time so that simply we say that time index so uh, with respect to time index we can categorize the corresponding random variable either discrete or continuous if time is uh, time index is taking value discreetly then we will say that it is a discrete time if time index is taking value in continuum fashion then we will say that it is a continuous time random process okay so this set of value that can be observed by a random variable x t at time t we call it a state of space and we can denote it by s and st simply for that fixed uh, time t we are calling it a, a state okay it is a state at time t so which observe value under some probability law so that's why xt for fixed t for for each t xt is a random variable so definitely we had already seen that in the definition of distribution and the process of distribution each random variable is having a certain probability law if a random variable is having uniform probability law, then we are seeing that uh, the corresponding distribution uh, probability density function happens to be uniform density. If uh, uh, that random variable is having a non-uniform law, then uh, that uh, non-uniform law may lead towards uh, exponential, may lead towards uh, uh, normal, depends upon Gaussian, uh, various uh, nature we had already seen that. That also I had already discussed the deviation from 
uniform law to non uniform law i had already expressed that as well during distribution in model 2 you can recall that there okay so uh, just simple example we are taking it if we, xt is the outcome of a coin toss at time t so simply that means uh, uh, here t is what talking about it is t is talking about uh, how many times you are tossing coin that number of observation of tossing a coin that simply you can say that first observation second observation third observation of tossing a coin so if you are tossing a coin several times then then several times that provides index okay time index simply we can say that so in totality if we talk about what kind of value xt will observe at a time t either it will observe head or tail because we are tossing talking about tossing a coin so outcome would be either head or tail so but if we are keep on tossing um, the coin so that's way what would be simple uh, simply a status space would be what it would be sample of the uh, that random experiment definitely it evolved with respect to time but here the state of space here each each at each time the random variable is observing either head or tail so that we that's why here we are having a finite state of space it is observing only two values either head or tail or if you try to convert that in numeric fashion uh, you can say that it is zero or one head would be zero uh, head would be one and zero tail would be zero zero depends upon your choice but you want to introduce so this one is just one example is the example of finite state uh, okay finite state of space now so uh, if you talk about random process so for each t x for each remember that uh, it is having meaning if you are writing for all or uh, after some expression then we read that for each t uh, that would be uh, universal in sense but if this uh, universal quantifier if you are writing prior to that expression uh, expression then we say that for each t that here fix uh, we are fixing t that uh, for it we are taking t and after that we are defining that expression that's where here you can say that for p uh, fixed t for each fixed t x of t it is a uh, discrete time random process okay if time happens to be finite or happen to be a discrete state so discrete state what is the criteria of uh, being a discrete state uh, what is the criteria of being discrete state so simply we say that uh, that discrete state would be either finite or countable except that we have to remove up rational number rational number are also countable we know that but problem is that rational number is not discrete why if you take any rational uh, real number and take a small number some of rational number would be there some rational number would be there so that's where rational number happens to be not a discrete that one is a non discrete set so among the countable set all countable uh, among the countable set we have to leave only rational set and remaining things would be discrete set so that that simply so if you, our time index set happens to be a discrete set then corresponding random process we will call it discrete time random process okay likewise if you, so the simply we can get a specific form or representation of a discrete time process why because here that uh, due to the countable nature of the time index we can get a proper sequence we had already mentioned that uh, any countable set uh, if you are having a countable set then every member of countable set can be written in a single sequence so that uh, countable set can be expressed uh, into a single sequence so that uh, expression i had already mentioned that okay so it can be written in a single sequence simply you can say that a because because of countable nature because it is having a bijection with respect to set of functional numbers so that's where you are able to put that countable set in a single sequence form okay just uh, here don't include rational only that would be not a discrete set i had already mentioned that. okay so here uh, in case of discrete time random process uh, the random process is having very a specific form uh, uh, you can denote it by just uh, x so simply you can say that chain it is a chain approach when uh, that you are dealing with a time index happen to be discrete time then just that random process you can call it just chain because uh, you are dealing with a sequential approach sequence of random variable it time is taking value in discrete fashion so that approach is coming okay now another uh, kind of random variable is that the continuous time random variable when time index happens to be uh, time index set happens to be uncountable set okay uncountable set that means uh, in sense simply you can say that it is uh, t is taking value in continuum fashion that means t is taking value either from interval or from complete real number 
depends upon our complete uh, okay that situation is coming in continuum fashion simply t is taking value in that case uh, simply we say that random process is continuous time random process we will see that so that continuous time random process we can't call that chain it is there is no sequential approach there so here t is taking value in continuum fashion so it is very generic in sense so this that kind of situation we will discuss i, I may take one example here so that's continuous time random process it is a uh, you can say that a random never recorded at every instant in time t okay every instant in time t instant instantaneous time you can talk about uh, okay further i will take few example on random process then things would be much clear so so let us count the number of customer who visited a bank from t not equal to 9 am you can call it until time t on a given day so here uh, if you talk about uh, the time index uh, it is taking value in continuum fashion it is not like that uh, the customer will visit bank uh, exactly at 9 or exactly at 9:15 or exactly at 9:30 customer may visit uh, that bank uh, between uh, 9 to 10 between 10 to 11 uh, likewise so uh, that time here uh, time index is set it is uh, a continuous set it is a one kind of interval so t is taking value from interval so that situation is coming so here we are having a random variable nt uh, that that one is uh, counting number of customers so definitely if you talk about a state space of this one a state space happens to be a discrete set but time index is a continuous set okay here we measure t in hours but t can take any real value between 9 to 16 that means suppose bank closes at 4 so that's why we are putting 16 in the closing time so uh, so we assume that definitely at the initial uh, time 9 am number of customer how many number of customer would be uh, just for simplicity we observe that there would be zero customer afterward customer uh, just uh, started visiting to bank okay so uh, uh, and t naught it would be zero t naught is 9 am okay so simply we can say that nt is a random process and what kind of uh, random um, value nt will observe uh, it will uh, observe value 1 2 3 4 in that discrete fashion discrete value or simply integ integral positive integral value will come uh, will be observed by nt okay and uh, t will observe continuum value so for any fixed time t1 and n of t1 n of t1 it is a discrete random variable simply it is a discrete random variable that's why we are saying that a state of space is a discrete set okay thus uh, what we can say that here nt it is a continuous time discrete valued random process that means a state a space is discrete set and time index set is a continuous set so th that is one example another example we can take it like this way suppose uh, we are taking uh, omega uh, at random from the interval uh, minus 1 to 1 what is meaning of uh, we are taking omega at random from minus uh, interval minus 1 to 1 that means we are uh, observing omega uniformly from the interval minus 1 to minus 1 to 1 okay at random uniformly and we define a continuous time uh, continuous valued random process like this way xt of omega equal to omega time cos of twice uh, of twice of phi t okay and t is taking value from minus infinity to infinity simply cosine function you can say that uh, it is a cosine signal where the amplitude is random in nature amplitude is uh, actually uh, we are taking a value of amplitude uh, uniformly from the interval minus 1 to 1 so here randomness is, pro uh, is borrowed from it is coming from amplitude so amplitude is here uh, random in nature so that's why we can say that we are having a a continuous time continuous value random process because it is taking value continuously from the interval minus one to one so that's why it is a continuous time continuous random value so if you are willing to see the graphical uh, various realization of uh, uh, this random process the continuous time continuous value random process so if you are taking omega equal to uh, uh, negative 0.2 then with respect to that you are getting uh, this kind of signal this is the signal okay if you are taking omega equal to 0.6 then uh, what signal you are getting this uh, dot dash signal you are getting it okay if you are taking omega equal to 0.9 then you are getting this uh, uh, little dark uh, uh, signal okay so various signal you will get based on various choices of omega from the interval but you are here you are 
taking omega uh, through uniform law you are taking omega through uniform law so easily we can find the distribution of this random process we can find it like so later i have taken few example in order to find it. so it, i think it is already about 45 minutes uh, if you are having any question you can ask otherwise i am going to wind up today's lecture in next lecture we will discuss in detail regarding further uh, representation of random process one representation that i will talk about to, uh, how to get central representation and if you are get, getting central representation of a uh, random process simply you can say that uh, uh, random process it is a what uh, it is function of random variable or a class of random variable, family of random variable you can say that if you are having family of random variable then definitely uh, you have to come up with central representation so central uh, that means you will come up with one time function so so that uh, most of that uh, member of that uh, uh, random process we which fall in the very small neighborhood of that time function or that that happens to be mean function simply we will say that and the variability variability we will call it uh, variance function the variance function would be also time function so we will get a central representation of a random process and variability of the representation as well so in next class we will discuss about that if anyone is having any question